Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, I hope to see both my Mars mission and my Venus mission come to fruition. Uh, this isn't in fact my Venus mission, by the way. Obviously, it's not hitting Venus. Uh, this is actually the Forseti that I stranded in space, and it has somehow gotten kicked into escape velocity and is now orbiting the Sun on its own. The Venus uh, mission is actually still here, uh, but the first thing we need to do, well, let, let's let's just click them and see. Now we can do this in map mode. We can see the Venus mission has its maneuver in 78 days, and of course when I scroll over here it doesn't like me. Okay, and then here this one has it in 73 days. Uh, it was pointed out that I should be using Kerbal Arm Clock, which is true. But I'm so used to not using Kerbal Arm Clock that I completely forgot about it. And I think for the mid-course plane changes at least, uh, it'll be alright. And the gaps between the events is so large that, I mean, if I can't figure out how to do a mid-course plane change in five days, there's something bigger that's the problem than me not using Kerbal Arm Clock. Alright, so let me hop to the Mars mission and take care of that first. Okay, so here's the Mars 1A now with a 34 second delay in all commands. How wonderful. <laughs> this is going to be tough, but uh, it's got to get worse because we're, we're pretty cl uh, close to uh, uh, Earth. We're pretty close to Earth right now, and that's not going to stay that way soon. So, let's do the time warping, and we'll get to our... Oh, why did it kill time warping? Flight computer throttling back time warp. Well, okay. Now we see the other mission appear here. So it's got its Venus encounter. Hold on a sec. I need to... This doesn't even need to appear right now. And unfortunately, I don't have the button for it. That is the the display for mission controller. And I I just wanted to see what the vehicles cost in miss, mission controller, and that's why I had that installed. I'm not actually playing with mission controller. Okay, I better give this some time. We've got a four minute and twenty second delay. I don't know how many commands it'll take me to get this. Uh-oh, now we've got no connection. Well, that's probably because Pratchett Station is on the opposite side of the planet. So let's time warp a little bit more so that it goes around again. Pass our maneuver node, but there it is. Okay, so uh, I'll have to use Flight Computer. Smart ASS is off. Important that they don't conflict. And I've given the command for node and I'm gonna say meters per second. Follow full. Do we have enough delta V in this stage? Yes, but we'll have to restart it. Is that possible? Yes, actually, it's very stable right now. Okay, so we'll just use this stage for this burn. Since I can't throttle finally anyway, it doesn't really matter whether I use this one or that one in terms of getting it accurate or not. It's not going to be very accurate. Flight computer's going to have to do it. Oh, I need to turn on RCS. The vehicle can't maneuver without RCS. It doesn't have uh, reaction wheels. So, intentionally, by the way, that's not uh, accidental negligence on my part. We are doing reaction wheels now, so I'm going to have to wait four minutes for the reaction wheels to start up. So let me time warp through that. Okay, and of course, my computer will automatically throttle me back as things are about to happen, hopefully, yes. My RCS. Yes. See, the problem is, let's say I now push the RCS button again, and I, am I turning it off, or am I turning it on? Now, I, I assume that it really didn't 
hear my RCS, it seems to have trouble detecting the fact that I press R. So here I go again. Alright. I've got time warp again. It broke back. Ah, there we go. But, okay, which one is this? <laughs> was this the first button press, or was this the second button press? I gather I'm gonna find out pretty soon. Flight computer uses a lot of RCS just to make a minor adjustment, it looks like. And after we turn, we might not be stable anymore, so I'll have to take a look at that. There's a point where I can just start the engine and the gibbling will get us to the marker pretty quick. But every inaccuracy will get us off on our intended encounter. So I want to be careful with that. Now of course we're already off. We've passed our maneuver node by five minutes. Of course with the orbit as it is with our orbital period one year and uh, and a third of a year a few minutes isn't too bad. It'd be worse with a 90 minutes. Okay I guess that was me turning off the RCS. Huh. Okay. Alright. Uh, I think we can go for the burn now and uh, gimbling on the engine should handle the turn to the maneuver node. Well that's my theory. Uh, we've got a almost six minute delay now. Time warp. Okay, ignition is good. It's uh, flight computer is not gimbling. Uh, it's got this, it's doing this thing. I don't know what this is, but it's not really getting us to the maneuver node. Oh, crud. This is not good at all. Come on, get to maneuver node. Uh, smart ASS if you could do it. Gathering Smart ASS can't do it. I pressed R to turn on the RCS. This is gonna get us pretty far off. I think RCS, uh, Smart ASS is trying. But whatever the heck flight computer is doing with the with this engine, I have no idea. How bad is this uh, leaving us? It can't be too bad, but uh, it could be bad enough. Our inclination will be adjusted properly at least. We're pointing, I guess you could say, south and that seems to be the correct direction. The problem is that the radial... okay right so I guess that was theoretically... now somebody said okay um, it, it actually burned for the right amount it's just that because we're pointing in the wrong direction that there's some more left than you know the timing and all. Okay but uh, I'll leave that and I think we're just sort of drifting sideways. I don't think this is smart ASS controlling it. Now I've pressed R already before so I'm going to let that happen. When it decides to. We've got to take this maneuver node off and we are not even encountering Mars right now. So I'm going to add another maneuver here. 
This is getting costly. Uh, further adjustments will have to wait, I think. Let's just try and get some sort of encounter with Duna first as a priority. And I'm going to burn out this stage if we can. Still very stable. Still got uh, lightings. So we'll burn out the 450. And I'm just going to tell it to do that. Not this amount. Okay. I've given that signal. Time warp. Okay. Engine is lit. Okay, that's the end of that burn. We got a replot now. We're closer, but we're not quite there. I'm gonna have to stage. This is always fun. Okay, yeah, let's stage. So, big firm press of the space bar. Yes, time warp. Could have used the solid rockets, but obviously too late now. And whatever happens there, because I don't have separation rockets. Okay, now that we're free of that. Now we can't do a maneuver in seven days, obviously, because that will interfere with the Venus mission. Okay, we've got a nice periapsis. Let's see if we can actually meet up with it. I trust... Uh... No, I don't think we are going anywhere. I think Flight Computer has once again told Smarty SS not to get involved, but I'm going to override that. I would love if Flight Computer would actually be able to point out a node properly, but... so that uh, we wouldn't use Smarty SS's ability to skip the time delay, but since Flight Computer has already proven that it really can't point at a node, I'm in a little bit of a bind. Now, we seem to be drifting towards this. Huh. Fall our solar panels open. Uh, which way would be a good way to burn for RCS? Pretty much any way would, uh, well, except towards it. Um, let's, for once, use chase view. Okay, and let me say I'm doing a tentative RCS burn and I'm going to see what happens. Okay, oh, actually we just missed it anyway. Alright, so cancel that. Well, don't cancel it because obviously the, the signal is already on its way. Uh, what we need to do is... Uh, Timely burn. Going to send the spacebar signal to ignite the next stage. I'll set this to 128.9.8. But we'll only use about 30% of our throttle so that I can cancel things in time. I guess. I might as well send this signal now as well. Maybe I shouldn't have a space in between. Maybe I should also not be so optimistic as to put point 0.8, but... Okay. Yeah. I'll give this signal now. And time warp.
Okay. Staging. And the burn. All right. Ooh, okay. Now it's burning too much. It's burning too much. Uh, what the heck is it doing? Stop, 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 stop. I don't know how that could have been 129.8. Oh, I, because the maneuver node was in the day. Ah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. It's my fault. Oh, fun. Okay, so where are we now? Well, we have a Duna encounter. Certainly not the one I wanted. Well, while I'm at it, can we cancel everything in this? I don't... Uh, oh, okay, well, it's going to take time. Whatever. Um... Well, we'll have a high pass over Duna, so perhaps we can do that experiment at least. Let me jump to the other one, do what I need to do there, and then come back and try and get us closer to Duna. So, uh, first things first, RCS on, flight computer up, point at the bloody node. If we can hit it right the first time, we don't have to worry about this. Now this one has its fuel flow unstable, so it might be that I have to ditch this before moving on, or try and use the Ullage rockets. Well, the thing is, if I try and use the Ullage rockets, I'll have to wait, like, I guess a minute before I find out whether it actually... I don't know. That could be tricky. Okay, uh, well, let me just time more. It's got the RCS signal delay is here. And then, why hold maneuver prograde? This is node. Is that what was going on? Prograde points in our first maneuver. Well, it says first maneuver node. Okay. So now, can you point at the maneuver node? I've got RCS on. And now it's... It's not really moving. I'm gonna have Smart ASS do it because it's not really going anywhere. It's just burning off RCS fuel and not moving. Okay, now it's off. Smart ASS can handle it. And you see, I mean, the RCS shouldn't be burning as much as Flight Computer does in order to turn it and flight computer doesn't actually turn it to maneuver node at all. I don't know what's going on with that. I'm sure it's my fault somehow, but I don't know how. Okay, very unstable. Oh, connection error. Okay, we've got connection now. Let's, uh, let's actually try and handle this while we have a connection. Now I don't really uh, okay so first things first I what what is the delta v on the solid rocket boosters cuz we're going to get that anyway It looks like it it's probably 7 is what we're talking about here I don't know if that's the solid rocket booster one 2 seconds sounds about right So let me cut the this down by 7 and it's at point 2 now so 04.2 <laughs> but there's only two seconds um, all right throttle up and got push 
base bar and then burn. That's within two seconds, but I don't know if the fuel will be settled by the time that the burn signal will hit. Well, we're gonna find out. No. Oh, yes it did. Okay, good, good, good. Oh, I didn't hear it for a sec, so I thought it didn't uh, start, but it did start. Okay, good. Whew, that's a tough one. Now, it looks like it'll burn short. I should always have this thing up. Shouldn't have hit it. So, uh, we're gonna end up short about... about 60. Since we're doing it a little bit early, maybe that would be good, maybe that would be bad, tough to say. Stop showing me the conic cryogenic tank. Now we're a lot further off than I thought it was. I estimated 60, now we're much more than 100. 200. More than 200. That's strange. I mean, it can't be that different, can it? Because cause we're on a similar portion of the orbit. We haven't really... I mean, 22 minutes isn't enough to change where in the orbit we are that much. So, I don't understand how could there be this big a discrepancy between these two estimates. There's some math problem wrong here. There's just no way. Yeah, I don't get this. My ignorance with regard to flight computer is boundless. Uh, well, we can try for a relight, another, but will it do it properly? I don't know. 471? Let me just do 471. And I'm gonna send the burn signal. Okay and hope this stays stable until then. Still a huge discrepancy. I don't know how that happens. Okay, fine. Because uh, yeah, I mean, of course, I had to do the burn 22 minutes later, but I don't see how that 22 minutes could make it that big a difference when the orbit is this, this broad. Well, we've got Eve Periapsis. Obviously, it's not uh, as accurate as I'd like it to be. How far off? Our, our inclination is pretty far off. I think the logical thing to do would be to set not there, but on the current trajectory, if we can. It always wants to give me the purple one. So we'll do that kind of maneuver, and that'll be in 33 days. And let's see, Kerbal Alarm Clock, can you help me out here? I don't know. Oh, detect and add alarms for maneuver nodes. Yes, that, that sounds good. Uh, threshold. I think we need an hour for it, actually. Three minutes is not enough time. Yeah, let's just go with that. Okay, so there we go, we've got that one set up. Let me go back to the Mars mission. See if we can't get any closer to Mars with that. Okay, I plotted another one of these Mars uh, periapses and it's 1,489 kilometers, which is better than what we've got right now, uh, in 11 minutes and I am going to let Smart ASS handle the turn.
Okay. And now, what I'm going to do is try to do this manually. I'm going to do a little test burn. Oh, why did that respond immediately? Uh, flight computer. When I do a throttle command, you're supposed to delay, delay plus signal zero seconds. Why? Okay, well, let's give this a go. Uh, let's say I program you for two bloody seconds to burn throttle 100%. Hmm, I don't think that's a wise decision. Let's say 50%. And I press burn. See, it takes you a minute and a half. Well, let's see how this works. We don't have infinite relights on this engine, by the way. You can see the hypergolic fluid here. Once that runs out, we, we don't get to relight this engine anymore. So this, uh, this Estus has, uh, f you know, 40 lights, but it, it's actually... I don't know which is more constraining, that or that. Uh, I think it uses... How much does it use each time? Uh, haven't kept track. Anyway, let's just say 30... No, well, no, I, I guess this would be more... Con no... No, the hypergolic fluid's more constraining. Okay, time up a bit. Okay, very good. That's a nice start. I no longer trust it to do burns based on the delta V because, I mean, obviously it, there's something uh, there's something I can't calculate about that, let's just say. So let's just do multiple burns, uh, risking the fact that we might run out of the hypergolic fluid, but uh, let's just do it this way. No, 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 no. Okay, let's see where we're at right now. Uh, you go off, and I want SAS toggled. See, now you're reading it. Oh, uh, maybe it reads sig uh, keyboard commands, but it, for some reason can't delay the throttle on my control stick? Is that a thing? Maybe that's what's going on. But then, but on the lunar landing, my control stick was delayed. So I don't know. I don't get it. And yeah, I think we could do a little bit more of a burn in this direction to fix that up. Let's say two second burn at 32. That's That sounds good. Okay. Yep, I think we can do that. Two second burn at 25%. Oh, a bit too much. Uh, I think one second the other way would have done it. So... What I want is Smart ASS, could you go to a heading, uh, pitch 0, roll 0 is fine, heading 225 please. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to try this one second burn. Pretty close, pretty close. And right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use RCS to handle this. Okay, who asked for that burn? Oh, oh, RCS is already on. What am I doing? Okay. So I'm going to go press N a few times and now it's immediately doing it. Okay, it's very inconsistent around here. Uh, why isn't my computer delaying the fact that I'm pressing N? Well, I'll even turn off Smart ASS to verify that See, I, I press T for SAS. I've got time warp through it, and let me try and press N afterwards to see if maybe Smart ASS was helping me dodge flight computer or something. Okay. Right. Now, is that saying pressing N? Nope. My RCS bursts are in real time. How interesting. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. So, 119 kilometers. I think that's about as close to Duna as I want to get at this point. So, that's it for this mission. We are going to get into Duna Encounter. Let's add that in somehow. Can we add... What? Stop that, stop that. Oh, the, uh, this this little window can't change. SA, SOI change alarm. Yeah, that would be good. Date, four years. Okay. Right. Yes, that sounds right. Uh, alarm margin. Again, I want an hour for that. Go ahead and message me. Oh, the kill warp is better. Okay, so we've set that alarm. Let's go back to the Venus mission. Well, we have no connection right now, but our node is in 33 days. Let's time warp to it. I doubt we'll be able to use this stage, but we'll see. Um, RCS is on. Let me remind Smart ASS that it should just point at the node. Oh, no connection, so yeah, it's not going to be able to do that. Let's wait till we get connection. <sighs> Tough to say. Uh, there's no more juice left in this stage. I'm just going to stage it now. So, pressing spacebar. And now waiting 10 minutes, it looks like. 10 minute delay. So we've got passed right through our maneuver node. Oh, I, I should push... No, no, I don't know what's going to happen if I push spacebar again. Time to pay attention. Yes, very good. Okay, please, I sh No, I didn't actually release that. Um, hmm. I just got to tell this to decouple. Why doesn't it show a delay here? Okay, now I'm gonna push space, well, I'm just gonna say activate engine. Now, having said that, I'm gonna try, uh, let's say, uh, five eighths burn, and we are going to do 200 meters per second. Not more than that.
uh, as expected. At least this time I anticipated the fact that this would be burning longer than that. And that's because we passed the maneuver node, but I'm surprised it's such a big difference. And it's tough to calculate exactly how much of a difference it'll be. I mean, I estimated 200, obviously. There's no point in me killing the command since the delay is such that uh, it wouldn't reach in time anyway. Okay, uh, right. Let me just allow it to point to that maneuver node for now. But I think I want Smart ESS off and SAS on, and we'll time warp to that. Let's see what our encounter is like now. Oh, not bad. Uh, 9,370. Not very bad at all. The inclination is zero. We could probably fix the rest of it with RCS, but what direction? So I'm going to add another maneuver node and try and figure out what the direction will be. Looks like a straight up inclination change will do. Okay. Uh, I'll give Flight Computer one more try. Let me tell it to point to the maneuver node. Let's see if it can do this. And I'll time warp to when it's going to actually execute that. Was that the problem I kept having? I just wasn't waiting long enough? Let's see. Whatever algorithm it uses to figure out how to get to that maneuver node, it's not a particularly good one. Well, it's getting perilously close to actually managing to line up properly. While it's doing that, let me just... Ooh. What the heck is it doing? It's firing both this side and that side. That can't be good. That is not good at all. No, don't fire opposite directions at the same time. Come on. Oh well. Anyway, uh, let me add a little bit of a... No. Uh, and you can see what's happening. This pitch and yaw. It's just going back and forth, back and forth. Okay, finally. Now, I do want to use SAS, but I want to use it in a little bit more measured a fashion. Let's actually see what's going on with our orbit. Obviously, I have no idea how this works, but if if flight computer and uh, remote tech isn't going to limit me from burning RCS in real time, uh, that's I, I the, the, my ability to simulate the fact that I should delay it by seven minutes or so is a little bit more tedious than I'm prepared to go for at this time. I'm not gonna sit here watch a clock or something. Let's just pretend I could do it in small bursts. There's no limitation to how often I can ignite the RCS after all. And I could do just small bursts once every uh, few minutes, time warp through every burst and do it that way. And that would merely be tedious, not impossible. Okay, well that's what I wanted. Maybe we should get a little bit closer anyway, since I can right now. Yeah, that's close enough. From out here, I think that's close enough. Okay, uh, so let's get the... What is this seven hour? Alarm. Uh, SO SOI change is what I want. Let's give an hour for that. 
And whatever this is, this maneuver no longer exists. So, as expected, it's this mission first that we have to pay attention to, so let's bring it in and start doing some science, finally. Oh no! We suddenly lost electric charge. No, 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 don't do that. Oh no! <laughs> we... Well, no, uh, but they, these... Oh... They're blocked by the other solar panels. Oh, come on. Really? Ah. Oh. Hold on. Uh, there's not going to be any connection. Well, maybe as its orientation changes a little bit with respect to the sun, it'll come back online. We'll see. We can only hope. Uh, so we'll just bring it into the Venus system and hope that the orientation changes just a little bit enough to get the electric charge flowing again. Okay, yes. Okay. You silly little thing. Alright, uh, point to the sun. What's the sun's direction? It looks like looks like we should go for pitch ninety, uh, negative ninety, negative ninety. That should work. All right, continuing on into Venus's sphere of influence. Okay, so here we are, and our Eve Periapsis is about what we expected it to be, 496, so no problem with that. And yeah, uh, let's just start doing some science before we neglect that. Uh, and of course, there should be a delay on this. Looks like about three and a half, uh, no, more like four minutes. Uh, observe Mystery Goo. Yes, let's do that first. And let's also queue, oh, I guess I can't, oh, I can, okay. Log grip, gravity data. And how about, I wonder if we can do these in sequence like this. Well, we're going to find out. And this experiment, uh, it's just doing a high orbit, so no good around Venus slash Eve. I think this is all we can do right now until we get low over Venus. Okay, transmit that data, yeah. Transmit that data. Oh, I don't know if they're gonna interfere, are they? Temperature scan can't be done right now, okay. Okay, well that one says 100% gravity scan, alright. Temperature stat scan couldn't be done. Now, can we... well, there's, there's two possibilities. Can we get into orbit around EVE, or could we... Could we go to a different planet? Right now, it looks like we'd be bounced back to uh, Kerbinish orbit. Kerbin slash Earthish orbit. Let's just examine that possibility and see how far off we'd be. I haven't looked up the phase angle between uh, going back from Venus to Earth, so uh, the inclination will probably get us. I can't really see any intercept. No real point to bring it back to to Earth anyway. So instead, let's try and. I mean, the inclination is 3.8. It, it's probably take too much. And it'd be hard to plan for anyway. So, let's just try and get into orbit. Uh, we're doing the examination of Eve's atmosphere and seeing... seeing what it really takes to get into... Uh, to aerobrake around it. I think the altitude I want to go for is just 100 kilometers straight, and we'll see how that works out. Use that as a benchmark. 
I mean, 50 seems to work pretty well for Mars, and that that atmosphere is not very thick. 100. Now these things don't scale linearly, so it's not like a hundred, uh, you, you can't go like E's atmosphere is a certain number of times as thick as Duna's, so you could just multiply that by whatever height you did Duna's uh, air break at. That, it doesn't work that way. There's a scale height, it's an exponential. But, yeah, for, for investigative purposes, a hundred is maybe a little bit low. For for Earth, 80 kilometers is usually sufficient, not for interplanetary flights, but for the moon it is, uh, depending on the situation. Maybe 110 then. Okay, that's close enough. 109,884. Going to, well, uh, this was able to do the maneuver nodes, so let's just say node me. Oh, which brings to mind the possibility that our new orientation might put us in the wrong direction with respect to the sun, so I better pay attention to that. Uh, it's flight computer firing like all the RCS in all directions. This can't be good. Okay, I'm uh, a little bit tired of waiting and its ability to make fine adjustments is dubious, so let's um, uh, get to the maneuver node here. And... Shall I trust Curve Alarm Clock to decelerate time warp for me? Aha, okay, good. Alright, so yes, don't tell me... But, oh, yeah, you gotta come up with a pop-up, right? Yes, close alarm. Thank you. Alright, and we've got three minutes to that. We are now 26.5 meters per second. None. 15 minute delay, oh darn. Uh, if I do this wrong, I could crash into the surface. So let's not do all 26.5, shall we? Let's call it 20. And yeah. 15 minute delay, sheesh. Okay, well, there it is. The purple planet. Of, I don't think Venus is actually. Is, is it? I, uh, I haven't. I, no, it isn't very purple at all. Ah, darn. Overshot. So, we are crashing into it, right? Right. <laughs> okay, um. Uh, hmm. Nope, that doesn't work. Okay, well, I'm just gonna time warp to the next thing. Ah, oh, darn, it takes longer to cancel the command than it is for us to get to the maneuver node. Okay, that's interesting. Let's say 8 meters per second here, and yeah, let's. Let's uh, get that signal out. Let's see how this goes. A little bit more than I expected, as I expected. Um, 138, not bad. Uh, what if I... Yeah, I'm just going to adjust using the RCS, because I pretty much have no choice. Though a 15 minute thing, it's an open question. Well, no, of four hours. I would have had four hours to do. I could count how many times I pressed the key if you'd like. But I think I would be able to do it in time. And I'll keep it to that. 111. 
Now, this has to get us pointing retrograde. No, that's radial, darn it. And finally, I'm going to give the command to retract solar panels. Oh, no connection. Okay. Okay, well this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. I thought I was just going to do a single burn at the mid-course maneuvers and then I'd be in to the planets, but obviously that was a little bit more complicated. So probably uh, once we get this all oriented correctly, I'll call this an episode and we'll find out next time whether this survives the arrow breaking and our uh, our whole Mars gathering of science will have to happen next time as well. So yeah, uh, sorry about that. I did expect to, I was hoping to get done with both missions in this episode, but it's it's getting a bit long here. Okay, I just time warped in order to get the signal and now I've pressed the retraction of the solar panels, but I do remember there is one solar panel that isn't properly action grouped, so I'll have to retract that manually after I see which ones go down. Okay, solar panels are retracted. Going to set the signal for that one as well. And with that, uh, yeah, I'll continue all of this in the next episode. We'll gather experimental data from the low Venus low Venus orbit I guess we'll say low Venus pass and uh, if we don't get into orbit obviously uh, it'll be a little bit tricky to time that actually uh, we've only got two hours and 44 minutes uh, if it's a 15 minute signal I will have to I'll have to send that signal ahead of time anyway so yeah uh, we'll finish that and finish the Mars mission in the next episode. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.